Alright, this video is a bit late, but I'm Jamie Latour, and this guide will show you how to get through the Lightning Temple in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So you made it to Gerudo Town, got Riju and her lightning strikes, and after wandering around the desert, you've made it to the Lightning Temple. Now while all the previous temples had some tasks that you had to do before you made it to the actual temple, the Lightning Temple requires some work to even make it inside and begin the puzzles. When you make the temple rise, you'll notice a giant Gibdo hive on it. Use Riju's lightning power to shoot an arrow at it to reveal the temple's boss, Queen Gibdo. To get rid of her, use Riju's lightning, which will strip her of her armor. After you've struck her with these arrows a few times, she'll get annoyed and fly away. Take care of the remaining Gibdo hives and head inside the temple. The temple will have piles of sand lying around that can be blown away with a fan or one of these Korok frond gusters. Get rid of the sand pile close to the closed door of the temple to reveal a button that you can step on to open up the way to the temple. Now continue on and you'll be on floor B1 of the lightning temple. Keep going and you'll reach a room where a large part of the floor will fall if you step on it. Beyond that will be some fire walls that you can get by pretty easily if you time it right. Past the fire will be another button that will shut off the fire and open the gate ahead. In the next room, you'll have to deal with giant fire balls, rolling at you Indiana Jones style. To get past these, use recall on them to send them back up the way they came. Once you're past the fireballs, there will be another button that will open up the way and prevent the fireballs from bothering you any further, allowing Riju to pass. Keep on going and you should make it to the Room of Hopeful Light. Kill the tough construct enemy here and then remove the mirror from this pile of sand. Grab the mirror with Ultra Hand and use it to deflect the light onto the panel above the door until it turns green and opens the way forward. And uh, you should get used to this mechanic because you're gonna do it a lot in this temple. Head up the now open path to reach the first floor of the Lightning Temple, otherwise known as the Room of Ascension, where the Lightning Temple actually starts. Touch that familiar Zonai pedestal and you'll see that it should activate a lift, except that it's not powered up because we gotta shoot lightning into four batteries. So, let's find some batteries. Battery number one is fairly easy to find. Go behind the Zonai pedestal and over to the right, move these loose bricks and pots out of the way to make a hole in the wall. This will lead to the first battery to use Riju's power to fire an arrow at this thing, which is apparently a battery, to light it up. Now let's go up the stairs near the Zonai pedestal all the way up to floor 4. Once you're at the top of the stairs to floor 4, turn around and glide your way over to that opening. There will be another Zonai construct here, so kill that thing. And then you'll see a statue that has one of those panels from before on it blocked off by bars and these giant rotating wheels that have like a quarter of them missing, maybe. I don't know. I don't know fractions that well. Use recall to reverse the direction of one of the wheels until its missing part lines up with the other wheel. It should look something like this. Then you'll find more bricks in the wall that you can remove and a big old shining light will be behind them. Provided that the wheels are lined up, the light will shine through the missing sections and activate the panel on the statue, which will lower the bars and move the statue. At that point, you may be wondering what to do next, and the answer is just to wait for the wheels to spin around again so that light hits another statue across the way. That statue will move, revealing a button. So head over there so you can plop Link upon on that button. When you do that, the statue will move, god that's bright, and down these steps will be this Indiana Jones-like contraption. This temple is very Indiana Jones-y. There will be more loose bricks, so jam one in between these spike walls to prevent them from crushing you and continue on to find a button that will deactivate them. There will be another spike wall trap, only this one will vertically crush you instead of horizontally crushing you. Grab another loose brick and you want to place it the way that I did here for reasons that will soon become clear. 
destroy the Zonai constructs on the other side, and in this room, there will be a mirror embedded in a pile of sand. So retrieve that and place it on the platform here, like so. Now walk over here and drop down into the little gap in the floor. Down here, you got a big pillar of light, another mirror stuck in some sand, and a rotating wall that hides one of these panels that we have to light up. Grab the mirror and use it to reflect the light onto the panel, which will open up the shutters blocking out the light above. That light will hit the mirror that we placed previously, which will be able to hit another panel provided that you properly place the brick earlier. Ascend back up and head into that room to find the second battery. Boy, that one was a lot of work. Let's drop back down to floor one and you'll notice a brick that's blocking an updraft. Move the brick and use that updraft to get all the way up to floor five. There will be a Zonai construct for you to kill and behind it will be a gap in the wall. In that gap will be a pillar of light. Then over here is a brick and a hole in the wall that's got some mirrors in it. Take that brick, place it like so in the light, then take a mirror and place it on top so the light shines out of the gap and hits that statue holding a mirror there. You'll notice that there's quite a few statues up here. The light that we're bouncing off of that statue's mirror will be shining over there near another statue that you can move. Adjust that statue until the light is hitting that one's mirror, which will deflect the light down. If you've done it right, this light should hit another statue with a panel on it below, which will reveal another button. Glide down, step on the button, and you'll now be able to enter the Room of Offered Light. Now this room is full of enemies, with four Zonai constructs and a Gibdo hive that will spit out Gibdos. Make sure to use Reju's Lightning to take out the hive and the enemies in this area. After everything is dead, you'll notice that there's another pillar of light and a bunch of Zonai devices. Up above in this room, is a panel that we need to light up. Now, considering the variety of tools in this room, there are likely a bunch of different solutions to this puzzle, but how I did it was I attached a balloon and a mirror to a metal platform, put it into the light, and used a torch to create a hot air balloon. As long as the mirror is positioned properly, you should float up and the light should get reflected onto the panel. That will open up the way to the third battery, so light it up with Reju's lightning. Now exit that room and glide over to the updraft so we can get back up to floor 5. Now let's move the first statue that we shined the light on before so the light can hit another statue with a mirror across from it. The light should bounce off of that one towards the last statue that we haven't touched yet. So adjust that statue until the light deflects off of its mirror to hit a panel above. Now if the light doesn't line up properly with the panel, you may have to go back into that gap in the wall and readjust the mirror in the pillar of light. Once the panel is lit up, the statue will move to reveal another button. Use the updraft or ascend through the floor to reach this button. When the statue moves, the path behind it will lead to a drop with a bunch of flames in the way. Slowly glide down to avoid being burned and there will be the last battery and a button for you to land on at the bottom. Kill any Zonai constructs down here and once they're taken care of, use Reju's lightning to activate the four fourth and final battery. Return to the Zonai pedestal and activate it to be brought up to the boss room, aka the Room of Glorious Light. Much like the entrance to the Lightning Temple, there will be a giant hive for you to shoot with a Riju-powered lightning arrow to reveal the boss, Queen Gibdo. This boss is pretty quick and has some annoying attacks to deal with. She's got a charging attack, she can fire a beam of sand at you, and she can generate giant tornadoes. Those are especially annoying because they can knock down Riju, which will interrupt her lightning ability. I really hate that. As you may have guessed, the key to beating Queen Gibdo is to hit her with those aforementioned Riju-powered lightning arrows. When you hit her with one, it will strip her of her armor, and if you hit her with another one, it will stun her, leaving her wide open for you to land some attacks on her. When you get her down to about half health, the dormant Gibdo hives in this room will start pumping out Gibdos. To avoid being overwhelmed, 
you should start taking out these hives immediately with lightning arrows. When you do, pillars of light will be formed where the hives were, and these pillars will actually damage the Gibdos. I'd recommend taking out all of the hives first, as it will make this boss fight much easier to handle. From here, Queen Gibdo will start getting more aggressive with her attacks, while also flying around and generally being a nuisance. Continue hitting her with lightning arrows and then whacking her when she's stunned, and after a while, that should be the end of this very irritating boss. Afterwards, you'll get a heart container, you'll acquire Riju's lightning power permanently, Gerudo Town will be saved, and that's the end of the Lightning Temple. For more gaming news and guides, make sure to check out thegamer.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.